the transaction will attract a kind of a tax the way we have it. And, and I'll also keep, I'll ensure that we keep a track in parallel with the GST because we are so attuned with GST in the, pa in the past few years. So I'll try and draw a parallel between both of it so that you know, we can understand the implications of the sales tax. So let me also give you a quick rundown on the agenda of what we're covering today. We will talk about in detail about the tax regime in the United States, then what is sales tax. We will also look at Nexus. And it is nothing but, a, a, it's also called as an 800 pound gorilla. I'll tell you the reason why it's a, it's a gorilla. And how come Nexus really trigger a lot of tax implications? Because around 67% of the people are already selling through your own website. And that's a, that's a decent crowd selling out from India to the US. And as Anil, um, a while ago, Dr. Anil, when he, the way he mentioned, US is one of the prime destination for Indian sellers across segments, whether it is retail, whether it is digital services, whether it is manufacturing and et cetera. We every time look up to the United States market because it's a heavily uh, customer centric market and a, a market which has got a lot of population which are open to try diversified products. So that's the primary reason where the United States markets we just keep our, uh, you know, keep picking up every time. And we will also cover what are the four important parameters for you to be looked upon from a sales tax perspective. And then we will also talk about what are the five points you need to keep a watch out for. And then we will also go ahead with other questions. So feel free to pause me at any point of time if you have a question. We'll keep it more interactive. Or you can also reserve your question, drop it in the chat box so that you know, we, we can take it in the next one. So first of all, what is sales tax? It's in, in a plain English, in a, in a most simplified manner, it's nothing but a transaction tax on commodities. Say for example, like you, know, you go and purchase an apple or a dress or a toy for your kid or probably a book. So depending upon the kind of a product and the state and the place of supply, a tax is levied and that's nothing but sales tax. So then what's so great about it? So it is as good as India's GST, but there is a slight difference here. Here, in case of sales tax, what happens is it is directly collected from the consumer at the point of purchase. So then what is, how is it different from VAT? How is it different from GST? In case of VAT or GST, so let us take an example of a GST here. Imagine Procter & Gamble is manufacturing the product and it is selling it to a distributor or a C end of agent. And the C end of agent will in turn sell it to a distributor. And the distributor will sell it to a retailer. And the retailer will sell it to the end customer. Now, if you really look in this entire chain of transaction, in this entire supply chain, at every point, there is an element of tax. PNG will levy tax to the C end of agent. The C end of agent will claim an input tax credit and he'll add his margin and again apply the GST to the distributor. The distributor will claim the input tax credit and eventually the last burden is on the consumer. So at every touch point in the supply chain, there is a tax element, but it is not the case in the US. In the United States, it's a new tax regime only. In the United States sales tax regime, only the last mile of the transaction is taxed. And that's why, and also the major difference here is, there is no tax credit available in sales tax regime. So it's because of one reason, at every touch point, since there is no tax levied, so there is no concept of credit at all. So technically, if you have to draw the, a, a strict comparison between India GST and United States sales tax, Indian GST is more a B2B centric tax regime and United States is more a B2C centric tax regime. And because of this striking difference, there is no concept of credit on your purchases and it is only a straightforward taxation at the time of point of purchase. So then what is the concept of Nexus? Why did I really call out what is Nexus? I'll also tell you why the concept of nexus is there. Let us do a little bit of time travel back to 2018. 
Prior to 2018, the scenario was as simple and as plain as in every country. If you are having a physical presence in any particular state, you are supposed to get your self-registration in that particular state. Now, as simple as it in India, you have a warehouse in Maharashtra, you have a warehouse in, in Gurugram, and you have a physical presence or an office in, let us say, in the state of uh, Karnataka. So you would definitely need three GST registrations in these three states. The same rule used to be there whenever you are having a physical presence. But as per law, it was clearly defined way before, like, you know, the, when you should really have the, the kind of you know, taxes. And this is as good as in 1930s, when the entire sales tax regime was crafted. And these people have taken this physical presence into the context. And at that scenario, so there is one company called as Wayfair, which is an e-commerce company. And they started doing business in every state in the United States. And with the basic fundamental rule, as an e-commerce company, I don't really need a warehouse. What I used to do is, Wayfair used to ship the goods from their one location to other location. So the goods used to travel in designated vans of Wayfair. They used to conduct trade fairs, exhibitions, and also do a, a kind of a, a, a shift sale scenarios where you just have a, a, a expo for a couple of days, you sell your furniture and then just move out. So the states are not really comfortable with this. One state which, we, uh, which really raised this concern was South Dakota. So what happened was that in such scenario, the South Dakota state government said very clearly, hey, you know, you cannot really do this wayfair because of one reason your goods are walking into our state, your salespersons are walking into our state doing performing sales transactions, you are participating in trade fairs and exhibitions and etc. So technically, you are performing a sales transaction within the state, and hence you must get a sales tax registration, levy the tax, collect it, and even remit it to the South Dakota state government. So let me take a pause here for a moment. Why I'm only talking about South Dakota out of the all other states which are there in the United States? United States has around 50 states operating there. Then why only South Dakota? Is it state specific? Yes. Unlike GST or a VAT, it is not a national tax. It is a state level tax. There is no federal government or a federal authority which would control your indirect taxes in the United States. Every state, every county, every city has their own tax. Like Dr. Anil mentioned earlier, a variance in your zip code can affect your tax big time. Let me also give you an example to that. Imagine Dr. Sundaram and Dr. Anil, both are neighbors in the same society. And Dr. Sundaram and Dr. Anil, both of them, they are their buddies in their morning walk. And they just brought a pair of shoes, each of them. Both of them brought it on Amazon. And Dr. Sundaram paid $100, and even Dr. Anil also purchased it for $100. But if he looks up onto the tax, Dr. Sundaram paid $10 of tax, but Dr. Anil has paid $11 of tax. So one fine day, both these gentlemen met on the jogging track and said, like, hey, you know, I got my new, new shoes and I paid $10 and I paid $11. And Dr. Anil was getting surprised. Why? Why did I pay any dollar extra? Because by virtue of the zip code and line address one and two, Dr. Anil falls under a special category, which is having an additional dollar of taxes. So they are in the same society, same zip code, but your line address one and two can create a lot of difference and eventually can also create a lot of difference in the way you collect and determine the sales tax. And like Dr. Sundar mentioned earlier, there is one statement which every authority, tax authority across the US would, would just give it out. It is simple, either you observe or you get observed. So the first statement is either you observe, that means you be cognizant, it is your responsibility as a seller to be aware and to be cognizant of the tax components which are coming in. And you should be accurate in determining the tax, levying the tax, collecting the tax, and remitting it and filing the returns. But if at all there is any deviation or any discrepancy in this, you are liable under the law and the concerned state departments will observe your transactions and the penalties in the sales tax scenarios are extremely huge. It can go as good as 50%, 40%, 50%. And on top of it, you will also have interest charges as well. I will also cover certain scenarios on what are the potential um, points to be watched out for. 
and that's where one important point which we are, we are discussing right now is nexus but okay but what is this nexus altogether and why it's so complex so coming back to the point like this this quarters the supreme court of the united states which was approached by the south dakota government on wayfair case and they went across and said like the, the 1930s rule doesn't really apply or hold good over here they are doing a lot of business in my state so you need to reconsider it and after a lot of argument and back and forth the supreme court of the united states gave a remarkable judgment in june 2018 and which is the wayfair versus south dakota and the judgment clearly says the wayfair company was asked to get a sales tax registration in the state of south dakota and it also gave a Uh, I think Krishna's line got disconnected. Just give us, give me a few seconds. I'll just get him back. Thank you for the good work. Thank you, Sarjo. Just uh, looks like his connection got dropped. <laughs> uh, we'll just wait. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I was wondering. Uh, suddenly, there was no sound, so I thought there may be some problem in my connection. <laughs> Thank you for the good words, Mr. Raj. No problem. My in the meantime, we can discuss. Uh, you know, uh, ah, sir, Krishna is back actually. Uh, Anil, sir, Krishna is back. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Yeah. My apologies. I think my my power supply just got tripped a bit. No problem. No problem. Carry on. Uh, carry on. Yeah. So, uh, Sundar, can you just help me understand where uh, people lost me there for a moment? Uh, yeah. So, I uh, you were uh, you were mentioning on the judgment that came out by okay. the judgment okay. of Supreme yes. Court. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, the Supreme Court has given this this kind of a power to the all of the state governments and said, "Hey, you know, you can decide your transaction volume and value." So, as a remote seller. I have to oblige the kind of a thresholds given by the state, which is by means of value and volume. And how does this value and volume look like? It can be like hundred thousand dollars in value and hundred transactions, but it is not a hard and fast rule. And the state were also given this kind of a flexibility. Some states have chosen it to be either or. That means either transaction volume or value, whichever is met earlier. Some states drifted towards an option which is transaction volume. And the value, and some states have chosen only value and barred volume. A state like New York would talk about only value, which is five hundred thousand dollars. A state like Colorado will say, like, I need around one hundred fifty thousand dollars or two hundred transactions. So it depends on the state to state. So now there are fifty states, and out of which five states have decided that we will not take the sales tax regime into our consideration. These five states are called as nomad states. And this is one particular state which Dr. Anil has just touched upon, which is Delaware, which is nomad stands for N stands for New Hampshire, Oregon, Montana, Alaska, Alaska, and even Delaware. So these are the five kind of you know nomad states which you have. And the rest of the forty-five states, every state has got their own kind of a threshold. So if you are selling into any of these states, you need to keep a tab on it. Number one. Number two, the taxes are not just at the state level; they are at jurisdiction level. So that means there are around twelve thousand to fifteen thousand jurisdictions in the United States, and now you can do your math. You have around fifty thousand plus sales tax rates available across twelve thousand plus jurisdictions and the forty-five states. So the complexity we are talking about is immense. It's huge. And it is not easy to keep a track on all of your fifty thousand rates or anything else by means of an Excel, or not even for your product. I will also give you an example over here. So before we go further on this, probably we will just 
I just ask one question and people, uh, and gen uh, ladies and gentlemen, please feel free to answer it in the chat window. In India, whenever you are buying a software for your company, let us say you are buying a Tally or you are buying a Zoho book or you are buying a Microsoft Office or anything else, you will see only one rate structure given on your invoice, which is 18%. Now, in a country like United States, how many ways you think you can tax a software? Please type it in the chat window. We will just take a minute on this and then you will quickly jump. There are 45 states in the United States and we are talking about how many ways a software can be taxed in the United States as per you. 1, 5, 10, 20, 45, 50, whatever it may be. Give me a number. 12,000. Thank you, Paul. Somebody has returned 12,000. Yeah. Oh. Edward De Souza writes it is 12,000. Pavan also writes 12,000. Yes. Okay. Looks like the 12,000 jurisdictions is acting on much here. There is another one. Archana also writes 12,000 ways. So everybody is, uh, I think, settling on 12,000. Settling on 12,000. Correct. So, gentlemen, it is, oh, zero. Okay. This is a good range. We are looking at zero to 12,000. 45. 45. All right. So let me also tell you this. So Mr. Pavan, Edward and uh, Archana. So sales tax is complex, but it is not that complex as this. So 12,000 is, is, is too high as such. And even not even 0 and 45. It is taxed in 450 different ways. Only in United States. Because the definition of software is 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 in, in multiple dimensions, because of which the complexity is 400 plus different ways. And so, like the way I've told you, the state by state rules get deeper and etc. And the content keeps changing every day. Trust me, in in 2021, we performed above 60,000 plus content changes in one year only for the United States alone. So that's. That's a huge chunk of changes to be done at the content. And that's what keep our, our content team day in, day out busy. So we were talking about Nexus, Nexus, Nexus. And I told like Nexus is a gorilla which is there. And what is Nexus here? Is it only transaction volume and value? And if I don't really breach them up or if I breach them up, then fine. So many people who are selling out on our website at this point of time, you know, they might be thinking, okay, I'm doing a business of like, you know, like $20,000 in, in a year and probably around uh, 80 transactions. So I don't really meet the show, but you should also check if you are meeting other types of nexuses. One is economic nexus is what we talked about transaction volume and value, which is based purely on your economic activity. But that doesn't give you a free pass that you are not supposed to get uh, registered in that particular state. You also need to check on the other nexuses. The primary one is physical nexus. So when do you call it as a physical nexus? Number one, if you are moving your goods into a state, so there is a physical movement of goods happening into that state, then you trigger physical nexus. The moment you trigger physical nexus, you need to get a sales tax registration in that particular state. And the moment you get your sales tax registration, you need to levy, collect, and remit the taxes to the firm. Second, you are having a salesperson or you have a contract employee or an employee on your payroll working in the particular state, then also you trigger a physical nexus. You are participating in an event or a trade show. The best example is in the state of Texas. If you go ahead and participate in any of the states, uh, in, in, in any of the events in the state of Texas, at least one event in one year, you are triggering a physical nexus. That means you are obliged to get yourself a tax registration. And for every cent of transaction you perform over there, you need to apply the or levy the tax. And again, you need to collect it and remit it. And the third one is, you know, even your advertisement can also trigger a physical process. Imagine if you are doing a paper ads, or even if you are trying to do a, a kind of a banner ads or everything else, all of these are completely taxable. 
and all of these can also trigger you to get or will force you to get a sales tax registration in that particular state so please be watch out if you are trying to do any of these from a physical nexus standpoint the second one is in this digital world we may not really do a physical advertisement but we might have someone who is our affiliates and an affiliates can also trigger an access to you so what is the definition of an affiliate over here if you really look into it imagine if you have someone to distribute a catalog or a coupon on your behalf or probably taking an order on your behalf or accepting the merchandise returns and etc they are considered as affiliates as per law if they are your affiliates then you are triggering a nexus and you need to get yourself registered in that particular state or you have a click through nexus someone using a website and who is redirecting the traffic to your website by clicking on a particular ad or directly or indirectly referring the buyers to your website then click through nexus also have a threshold in a state like new york it is $10000 in a year so based on that you know you are supposed to get yourself registered over there and the second one and then the most important point here is trailing nexus so trailing nexus is it is more like you know once you have already established nexus and you have shut down the business in that particular state imagine in 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 a, in a state uh, like washington you have already triggered in your, your nexus and then you just shut down your business you are not you found like it's not profitable to you but since you have already triggered nexus you are supposed to comply for sales tax compliance for at least one more year so even if you shut down your business that nexus can trail along that's called as trailing nexus so just think about it it's not just your transactions volume and value even your physical presence your attendance or you you walk into a particular state to just to see a market study you just want to see is the state of arizona suitable for me to perform my market or probably increase my market share and you along with one of your your sales reps you spend around two days uh probably one day in in h1 and uh, uh, another day in h2 but still you trigger physical nexus as per the state rules of arizona so that means we watch out on on these aspect you might trigger physical nexus you might have triggered affiliate nexus or like through nexus etc and storing inventory people who are selling it on amazon or even on your direct uh, um, website or etc if at all you are storing inventory even if you are using fba if you are selling on amazon like fulfilled by amazon etc you are moving your physical inventory and please watch out on it there is a retailer who just triggered a nexus in the state of philadelphia because he is selling he is an fba seller and he is moving his goods and he was not aware of this regulation he was asked to pay a back dated sales tax of about 1.6 million usd and followed on top of it with penalties and even interests so the total amount would be more than 2 million dollars so it's equally important and and it's it's super important that you know you have to keep a track uh, track of your nexus and also be mindful of where on what type of nexus you are triggering because that can really really unlock a huge compliance cloud on your business and again i am reiterating this statement please observe your business or else you get observed by the authorities and once it is under the radar of the authorities it is too tough and too critical for us to move out of out, out of their their view and so it's it's important to be watch on it so that we just talked about the the software for a while i'm just talking about how a software is taxable and exempt over here california which is considered to be the heaven on on many aspects of it is is more from a from a software perspective it gives a lot of exempt scenarios to it but if you look at the same thing in the new york you are hosted software as a service is taxable but your implementation is exempt but the same product when it goes to taxes it is 80% taxable and 20% is given as a refund so this makes it complex your product taxability is an another dimension which you should really keep your tab on because the product which you are selling can be taxable in one state it can be waived off in another state it can have an exempt in one state or it can have a differentiated tax supplier as well so it is important that again you should you should look at your product taxability 
to understand how complex is your sales tax compliance is all about. And that is a primary challenge to keep up with the sales tax compliance, which is your product taxability. So now quickly forwarding, what are the kind of four pillars for your sales tax compliance? Like I've told you uh, till now, first of all, please watch out on your Nexus. And 67% when you are selling on your website, and I believe you are doing business for that quite a lot of years, it could be like three, four years or so. If you are doing it, if your business is started or you are doing business into the US before 2018, my strong recommendation is you, for you is to perform an Nexus study. Understand if you have breached Nexus at any point of time. And then it is, it is helpful because you can go back directly to the state voluntarily and start disclosing your things and say like, hey, I'm not aware of the nexus. I just did a nexus study and I figured out that I'm breaching it. So you go ahead and you voluntarily submit your details. That way you will be given an exemption or it is again to the discretion of the state authority. There is no hard and fast rule that if you do it, you'll get an exemption. So it is up to the discretion of the state authority to waive off your penalty or reduce your penalty or anything else, but it is strongly recommended so that you will be still in the good looks of the, of the state authorities. And the second one, if you are a business which is doing uh, a lot of traffic or generating a lot of business from the United States after 2018, I would strongly recommend this compliance health check every year for you. Please do a Nexus study. The Nexus study is standard one, could be like you know, close to like, you know, like $5,000 or so, but still, you should, I strongly recommend that you do it so that you, know, you would avoid a lot of tax compliance and, uh, and even, you know, penalties in the future. So you, if you determine your nexus and figure out if there are any voluntary uh, taxes to be disclosed, you need to file a voluntary disclosure agreement, or if you are already registered in a state, you need to get your back filings to be done. And Avlara can assist you in all of this, but it is strongly recommended you keep a watch out on it. So determine your nexus. Figure out where you are breaching your nexus or the thresholds, whether it is physical, economic, or even affiliate, click through or a trailing, anything else. So all of these can trigger your nexus. So please be watch out, watch out very clearly on nexus. Then according to register in that particular state, then collect the accurate tax. Do not collect the tax which is above. Say for example, standard would be like you know, um, majority of the people will also think like this. Let me collect 6% of tax. And if the state government say like it is 4.5%, 1.5% is very good. Uh, if it is 7.5%, I'll put it out of the pocket. In the former case, you are collecting a tax component higher than it is supposed to be from the end customer. And please note that in the United States, the end users are very, very about the kind of taxes. So there is an end user transparency, which is in place in many states in the United States. That can put a lot of questions from your customers to you, and eventually you will fiddle the trust you have earned from your customers. So it's not recommended. And in the second one, if you are trying to pay it out of the pocket, it is a negative cash flow. So it's a no brainer that it is not really supposed to be done. So your tax determination has to be accurate. And you cannot keep a track of it on an everyday basis by maintaining it in Excel. You need a, a tax technology automation solutions to do it because this is a constant changing flux. Like they have told you, the 60,000 changes have done are, are done only in, in 2021 over a period of a year. So that means on an average, you can see the kind of how many changes we are trying to do in a day. Almost close to 200 in a day. It's, it's not a joke. And after you determine the tax, ensure that you are filing your entire taxes right on time and remit the taxes right on time because it's equally important that you maintain your, your filing and uh, even your remittance intact as per the timelines and the deadlines given. It. Let me also tell you this. In United States, whenever you register into any of these states, you will not have a standard date as we have it in India. In Indian GST, we file our GSTR 1 on the 11th before prior to the 11th of the subsequent month and the GSTR 3B prior 21st. But in United States, the state authority has that complete 
discretion to determine your filing. They can say you need you can file it on 10 or 12, or they can say you can file it on a quarterly basis, but remit the taxes on a monthly basis. And it can go as crazy as your filing date can be third Friday after first Wednesday. It can also go crazy like that. So it's important that you keep a track of it. So you imagine you are operating in eight states and eight states have got different timelines. It is again tough to crack. If you are doing business in all 45 states, then it is, it's mayhem to be complete. So just again, understand the importance of technology over here, which can help you streamline and automate your entire tax compliance. So what are the five points you, if you are planning to sell into the US, because around one third of the total crowd today is looking at selling into the US. First of all, where understand where you are doing your business, what is your transaction volume and what is the volume and where you are supposed to get yourself registered and etc. Second, collect the accurate tax determination and remit the sales tax. And the third part of it is the right tax determination. And fourth, manage the exempt sales because like the way I've told you, imagine if you are doing a supply chain, you're doing a drop shipment. In a drop shipment, there is an exemption scenario which will walk in. So understand what is your exempt sale. But also note this, this is again a point which is what uh, important to mention over here. At times states also calculate the exempt sales also as a part of your economic activity. They might also ask you to report your exempt sales as a part of the return. So it is important that you understand what is an exempt sale and is your transaction or your product completely exempt in that particular state and accordingly uh, levy the tax. And fifth and most important point, remit the sales tax to the authorities by filing their right returns. And this is extremely, extremely a complex scenario. It's not fair and simple. If people say that Indian GSTA is complicated, let me also tell you this, out of my experience selling it into the US and even in India, Indian GSTA is not just ahead than in US United States sales tax. U.S. sales tax is extremely, extremely complicated. So how do we support or from the aspect of it? You can be rest assured, Avlar also have a compliance solution, compliance law, etc. You can drop a, a, a message to us. Probably Sundar can share a coordinates with, the, um, with you guys. You know, you can you can just drop your, your questions or queries onto that one and we can move on and happy to help you. So the same thing, which I've just depicted in a very different manner, where for your first step, where you want to understand where you are supposed to register or should you really collect the tax and remit the sales tax, we can help you with the sales tax risk assessment. If you want to register in a particular state, we can help you with sales tax registration. You want to determine the tax, we have a flagship product which can help you determine the accurate tax, not just in the United States, but across 193 countries on this planet. And you also want to track your exempt sales, you have an exempt certificate which is to be tracked from your vendors or from your businesses or from your customers or your, your franchisees or your partners, etc. We have a, a product called a cert capture to manage your exemption certificate. And important, you need to file your returns. We have Avlara returns as well. So technically, like Dr. Sundaram has mentioned earlier, Avlara is in the business of making taxes less taxable. And with that note, I just want to give you a glimpse of what we are. We are a tax technology company and we performed around 28 billion transactions in the last one year. And we filed around 3.1 million returns and currently serving 100,000 customers across the globe and with offices across all continents um, in, the, in the major regions of Europe, US, um, India, and even in APAC as well. So with that note, I just want to Take a pause completely and maybe just let me know if you have any questions. We can take questions at this point.